This is a video on how to per, how to conduct a virtual lab at home. And for those of you without computers, you'll have to do that in our classroom. But what we're going to do is go to today's homework page. That is, we're already there. And we're going to click on this icon right here. If you can look on the screen, you can see it. And you click that, and that will take you to the virtual online lab where you're actually going to be doing your work. You're going to be recording your work here on this page which we gave you as a handout. So let's go there and see how this is supposed to work. We have first of all I'm, I'm going to just do a couple for you so you can see and get the feel for how this actually works. I'm going to take this red square and I'm going to put it over here on the scale and you'll see right here that we have a mass of that little red square of 19.5. That gets recorded in the red square line for the mass. And once we've recorded that, then we can go back to the business screen and we can uh, take it on over to the little tube here and you see the water level right now is at what we call the zero level and when we drop this guy in that's going to make the water level go up and the amount that it goes up is a total of 14 milliliters that's the difference between the starting level which was down about here and the level that it's at right now so that 14 Point zero mils is going in the volume column. Now you take out your calculator and you divide 19.5 which is sit sitting here in the mass column by the volume which is 14.0 and the number that you'll get on your calculator when you round it to the right number of sig figs which is 3 is going to be 13.9 and now we're going to go find out if this thing floats so we're going to take this little guy out of the drink here and drop him into this pail of liquid which is actually water which we know because the density is 1.0 whoa look at that baby sink and you see here we have a 1.0 and that's where you want to leave that but you can adjust this density which is kind of cool and for this adjustment you can't get the density up above what you had so it will there's no way to make that guy float and so I'm going to try and get this back to to uh, one point to one point oh let's see can I barely get it in there can I do it I did it okay so now we know that that thing doesn't float and so over here we're going to say no and now you see we have four of the columns filled in the ranking is going to be from smallest to largest the smallest being one and let's count and see how many items we're actually going to be counting or uh, doing this for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this is going to be between one and ten we don't know what it's going to be until we get all of these filled in so let's go back and let's try and do one more and then I think you'll have the idea of what to do on your own so let's go back to our business screen. Let's put this little guy back where he belongs in the square here. And let's take the blue square. So I'm going to put the blue square over on the scale. And that little dude weighs 70 grams. 70.0. So we're going to go back over here. And we're going to type in 70 point. So we've got our mass entered. Now let's go back and figure out what the number is going to be when we get the volume and watch the volume go up when we drop this guy down inside and there we go we were right here and now we're up here and the computer kind of tells us what that difference in volume is so that would be 29.0 now let's go over here and record it so when we divide 70 by 29 we get 2.41 and let's uh, let's see if that thing is going to float or sink now anytime the density is bigger than one it's going to sink so what is your prediction 
think for a minute before you you uh, drop this guy in. Here we go. That's right. It sinks. So I'm going to put this guy back and we'll record on our sheet that this guy is also a no. Now I'm going to stop here, but you're going to do all ten. So you're going to be filling in the blue triangle, the red oval, the pink square, the purple oval, and so on all the way down. And when you're done, you're going to rank these from smallest to largest. And you're ranking by the density. So this guy, the blue square, has the smallest density. So we're going to give him the value of 1. And since the red square is m much more dense than is the blue square, he becomes our number 2. Now we're going to go down, after you, you will go down after you finish those two guys, and you're going to record right here what the density is in the pail, simply by looking at the pail and reading what the density is at the bottom. And then you're going to go to find the mass and volume of the objects. Um, oh, this, this was the directions that we just followed. Now you have some questions to answer, and you're going to be done. So do you notice a pattern uh, in the sink float? Does it have anything to do with the density? And which object has the greatest volume? That's simple by just looking at your chart. If we were just doing two things, this one would be which? Think about it for a moment. See, we're looking in this column. Okay, the largest volume for what we have so far is the blue square. Which object has the greatest mass? Well, we look over here, and the blue square wins on the mass as well. And which object has the greatest density? Well, we just figured that one out. That was 13.9 for the red square. Now, your results will be different because you're doing all 10 of these things. You're actually going to do the other 8, which I didn't do. And uh, then you will be done. So, I hope this uh, gets you on the right track and that you have a good time with the lab. And by the way, if you didn't... Yes, 